Joining us now to talk more about HR1 is John Malcolm, Vice President of the Institute for Constitutional Government at the Heritage Foundation. John, welcome back. So good to see you and thanks for coming on. Uh, as Eric mentioned, the, Dem the Democrats that are is, is really, they're really touting this bill. And among the things it seeks to do is to expand early voting and enhance absentee voting. Let's talk a little bit more about that and what you think of those methods to ensure election integrity. Well, this is a completely unwarranted and unprecedented attempt by the federal government to take over the election process. It's an 800-page bill, chock-a-block with things that really constitutes what I would characterize as a liberal wish list. So it requires same-day uh, registration. So you show up at a polling place, you want to register to vote you know, before somebody can verify the accuracy of the information you're providing or check to see whether you're an eligible voter you get to vote. Uh, it bans uh, voter ID requirements. Uh, it's automatic registration of people to vote through uh, federal and state databases. But for instance, those same officials can't check to see whether you've changed moving addresses and have you know, moved away from a state. Uh, it requires people to count out of precinct voters. Uh, it mandates vote harvesting. Uh, it provides for an automatic reenfranchisement of uh, convicted felons the moment they're released uh, from prison. As you say, it, it mandates no fault absentee uh, balloting, uh, but, but at the same time, it, it bans notarization and witness signature requirements. It requires uh, people to count votes up to 10 days after the election, absentee ballots that are received. And, and there's so much more. It, it takes away the redistricting process away from state legislators. It reduces uh, the number of federal election commissioners from six to five, which increases uh, the odds that they'll engage in some kind of partisan uh, you know, investigations. It's, it's astonishing what's in this bill. John, is there anything in that bill that you like? And also when it comes to election integrity, what do you think should be done? Well, there's a lot that should be done in terms of election integrity, many of them the, just the opposite of what is in the For the People Act. For instance, I think that there should be voter ID requirements both for in-person voting uh, and for uh, absentee balloting. I think that uh, vote harvesting or really vote trafficking, if you will, uh, should be banned unless you are an immediate family member of somebody who is uh, sick or infirmed or elderly. Uh, state legislatures are taking up uh, a lot of these measures, uh, there is a bill that's close to passage in Iowa and Wyoming uh, and Georgia that are looking into some of these measures. The Heritage Foundation has put out fact sheets, both about problems with H.R. 1 and also things that states that states legislatures ought to be doing uh, to improve the integrity uh, of our elections. H.R. Uh, 1 is the exact wrong way. Uh, to go. We should be empowering uh, state and local officials to have more secure elections, and certainly we have now. And John, we have probably about a minute left or so. Uh, ultimately, do you think this bill will pass? Well, it's certainly going to pass the House. Uh, in the Senate, it is evenly divided. I, I don't think it will pass the Senate only because the legislative filibuster uh, still exists. I don't think there will be any Democrats who will be prepared to uh, to vote. I mean, sorry, any Republicans who will be prepared to vote uh, for this bill. And there'll be a lot of pressure uh, put on Kristen Sinema and Joe Manchin to, extra, to, to nuke, if you will, do away with the legislative filibuster in order to ram through bills like H.R. 1. All right, John, we're going to leave it right there. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate your time. John Malcolm, Vice President of the Institute for Constitutional Government at the Heritage Foundation. Thank you again. My pleasure.